it's a great pleasure and honor to be here ladies and gentlemen uh, it's a, a kind of a dream come true for us i you know walked the path look at the whole thing about it took about about 25 years back we created the supercomputing uh, center at the indian institute of science due to a phenomenal amount of great support that we received from the government we have always maintained ahead of the moors law growing by almost uh, doubling our capability within about less than about 18 months close to about 12 months to 13 months then we realized why was it happening i think dr uh, saraswat alluded to this there were two things that were happening in the country there were huge national initiatives like you know you talk about igmdp or lca or so many of them they required tremendous amount of computing power in terms of designing the aircraft actually re trying to replace the wind tunnel and so on and so forth the cft computational uh, structural mechanics computational electromagnetics and many of them then there was also a huge requirement from the weather the second thing that made everything happen was also the denial so because of that the country started once you denied something you start looking at a way and means by which you want to get it so i think there was a large scale investments in the collateral programs of that and the things were growing suddenly sometime back the government asked us a few of us to look at what are the kinds of planning that the country should do for supercomputing when we looked at this landscape every one of the you know educational institution makes a large scale investments on the instruments and also makes you know like a microscope and spectroscopes and so on they are becoming higher in resolution both in space and time they were spitting out huge amounts of data but at the same time all along all the last about 20 years or something that we've seen the supercomputing capabilities in most of the educational institutions were also growing to keep in touch i mean keep you know abreast of the experimental capabilities in other words the experimental capabilities and the computing capabilities of the country were actually pushing each other and that's how the whole country was growing now suddenly we found you know the likes of vijayaraghavan and his predecessors as well as in the dst and others they have been continuing to make investments on instruments and that have been you know uh, making our research at the front for, uh, forefront of research in the world but the computational investments had come down that's because the whole computational architecture from what we call as a very dedicated supercomputing architectures like cray without a cache to what you call as a homebrew supercomputers when the transition took place people didn't know what is a supercomputers what is a computer so i think we were getting caught in all of these things and many of our programs were not scalable to 10000 process and 100000 process so the best ibm sp2 that we bought had an 8 node sp2 ajay mahanti was here uh, knows about it so we never had most of them a shared memory engines and so you know it's a huge capability that you get in terms of raw man i mean raw computing power but to an application man i think it may not be applicable i mean usable and so on so we had the thing country asked us to map all of the requirements which we did about 40 of us met we also had the line ministries like isro the drd was and um, you know uh, atomic energy and many others also come in actually work on an architecture which is a layered architecture with a core being you know extremely uh, powerful petaflop machines and maybe about 10 to 100 petaflops of computing power and the layer outside and the layer outside about 73 institutions have been identified in the academic institutions the line ministries would also make their own investments and go ahead and be in tune with that and all of them will look sit on nkn with a three layer layered architecture and open internet where everyone would be able to come the operational uh, ministries would actually have it as an extra, i mean uh, extra net so that they don't have uh, this thing and then there is a be beautiful architecture which had these things and also there was a core multi core million core uh, cloud in the whole thing the idea was that we should touch 25% of the scientific manpower in the country that was a mandate 
So in order to do this, I think we worked on, embarked upon several these things because now what was considered as a desire of the academic community to have computing powers of contemporary capability at their doorsteps was converted, thanks to Saraswath, into a national mission to make it into a project by which every one of the stakeholders would be invited to participate. What are the four legs on which it's going to stand? R&D. The R&D would actually be helpful in creating the ecosystem. Don't get carried away by exaflop, uh, you know, uh, these things. We are not used to throwing words around. Even tomorrow morning, if somebody gives me an exaflop computer, I wouldn't be able to run it. So do not use that. It's called the exaflop initiative. I don't think within this period we will be talking about exaflop, though it, uh, you know, my wife would be extremely impressed if I say exaflop. But we are scientists, we have to come down to ground. Then applications, there are about five applications which across the thing it will be delivered, for which the industry would be coming in. We will have a session later. Training to more than about one lakh people who would be trained on supercomputing, not only paralyzing, system administration and many other things. And the most important thing, CDAC is going to make all our dreams come true, that they will make sooner or later all of these systems within the country. That's the dream. There is no cost for dreaming. So also the part of the computing time that will be available will be shared by MSME. It will also be given to private industries. I mean, at some cost, which would be nominal, to the industries and also to other institutions. In other words, if a computer is sitting in the Indian Institute of Science, it doesn't mean 100% of the time will be available to the Indian Institute of Science only. We have selected institutions and we are going to launch quickly. And you will find that now the program is on its wheels and we would like you to actually listen to us carefully, then give suggestions and it would be our extremely great pleasure and honor to receive your suggestions and see how we can move forward. It's a nation's mission. It's not, not an individual's mission. It's a country's mission. The country should work with the four pillars of the country. I mean, uh, the country, the academia, the government, industry, and the society. I do hope that we will build this NSM mission on these four pillars. Thank you very much.